just kind of spread it out a little bit and you're not going to get it perfect when you start. You're just trying to get that thing headed the right direction and then kind of come to the other side. Do the same thing. And it feels like you're going to just obliterate it and rip it all to pieces. But anyway, you're just going to kind of ball that up. And then once you get to the point where you got these top two edges, just go ahead and flip them. And then you're just going to go in and start getting that seam out. And what I do a lot of times is actually sit that on the chair and use that down inside that pouch to actually get that thing completely pushed out. It's about like trying to turn a cardboard box inside out. Yeah, and you'll see once you, yeah, there you go, you're almost there. Once you get that initial part turned through, it starts to kind of come together a little bit. Yeah, flip that back down now and you've about got it, the hard part at least. Yep. like the unveiling, you know? <laughs> it starts to look like something. Yeah, and like I said, even on the table if you want, you can push that pallet right down over top of that and you're not going to hurt it. I mean, we made sure to get those stitches pretty tight and you want to just kind of, yeah, that might work better. I'd sit it on the chair in case you Yeah, if you want to mark where that's going to go, you did kind of, it looks like, yeah. Um, and then the other thing you want to keep in mind, that is not exactly the same width. Right. So we'll kind of do a reference here. And the reason being, you don't necessarily want to put your hole out too far on the edge. So you want to start your first hole so that you're going to go through all three of those layers. And you want that to be fairly square. up on the level here. And that's pretty darn close right there. Go back this way maybe a little bit. So what I do is take a pen or the back of one of these needles and just kind of mark where you're going to put that first hole. So right about there. about there. Now, if you want to pre-mark these, and this is what I do, especially on this seam, just so you don't have any problem. Start in that hole you made and just follow that line. And you're not trying to go clear through it. I'm doing it real light in case you want to do it a different way. You're just going to go in that previous hole. When you right. get to the end, before you go clear to the end, see how that's going to work out. You may have to use that outer hole and change the spacing just a little bit just so you don't run off the edge of the right. bag okay. or don't come up too short. Alrighty. Did any of that make sense, hopefully? I think so. I was telling Rick Weber when he asked me about doing this class, I said, you know, I've never tried to explain to anybody all the steps to doing this. This might be hard to get my head around. Now, some of it was. I mean, I sit down and do it, you know, Start at 3 o'clock in the morning by 7, I've got half a bag done. I've never taken a note. I've never taken a photo. So it's kind of hard when you go backwards and think, well, how am I going to explain how to do that? Yeah. You said these, uh, you cut the holes in them now? Um, if you're going to do that, yes. Okay. Let me see where that comes from. And what are the holes in the strap for then? Basically, it serves as a point to hang like a pick and brush or you know a turn screw whatever you want to keep inside the bag and okay. that way it doesn't end up falling down in the bag 
I usually use that second from the largest one. Now, I typically do it on the outside just so whatever it is you might have tied onto it ends up clear at the edge of the bag. Okay. But you can do it on whichever side you'd like. Okay. It really doesn't make much difference. And I would just leave minimally about an eighth of an inch from the edge on the side in what will end up being the bottom of that strap. That way it doesn't have a tendency to want to tear out. So about here? Maybe? Yeah, that looks pretty good. You have Ethan take a picture of that. Gotcha. <laughs> I just think my hands are going to be shiny for about three days with all the mink oil and the neat oil. <laughs> It's funny, you see, when I'm on a run and doing a lot of this stuff, for several days, a lot of times your hands go like wax on your car. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you the water speeds up on <laughs> Yeah. I'll be there to wash my hands. What do you think? I think I'm about done. More ways than one. I wasn't even stitching and I'm tired. Yeah, probably in, in this kind of clothes, probably. Okay. Maybe. Yeah, Maybe and that'll still give you a good solid probably six inches of adjustment. Okay. Alright. Got it? Yep. Alright, so that'll be your first hole at the top. Okay. And then I just kind of eyeball it about every inch, inch and a half, just get down through there. And what I like is about six inches of adjustment. Okay. That gives you plenty for winter clothes, heavier right. outfit and everything. Okay. Get in there and get you the punch. I can get it for you. you I wouldn't want, I don't think I'd want to go, well, of course, clothes on. Maybe right, that's what I mean. For, hey, yeah. And we can shorten it up. Yeah, I just shorten it up just a little bit there, yeah. Yeah, about right there, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right there. And then, like I said, I just kind of eyeball them about every yeah. inch, inch and a half. And leave six of them coming yeah, that way. Yeah, six holes will get you okay. a decent amount of adjustment there. Come on. You can punch. You're almost there. Wow. Oh. 